In this video I would like to take you on a quick tour of cellular iron uptake and specifically how iron is taken up uh, via transferrin into the cell and this is what we call the transferrin to cell cycle. So you remember that transferrin is the carrier molecule for iron in the bloodstream and each transferrin molecule has got two binding sites for iron. So you can have four different forms of transferrin uh, bound to iron. You can have this one here where, the, where, where no iron is bound. And this is called apo, apotransferrin. You can have a molecule where only one molecule of iron is bound, either on this side or on that side. Let's call those seats A and B and both of these where only one can be bound is called monotransferrin so both of these monotransferrin and then you, there's a possibility that you can have two molecules of iron bound two spots taken and that is called so-called diferic transferrin so from this it is obvious that the diferic transferrin is richest in iron and this is also the form of iron that the body or the cells of the body likes best. Now, the next role player that I need you to meet here is the transferrin receptor, which I've drawn here, transferrin receptor, drawn here in uh, reddish orange. And you can see this molecule has got two parts looking identical, almost mirror images of each other. And this molecule, each side can bind transferrin. So let's just say this yellow represents the transferrin that we've drawn here and the transferrin receptor has got different affinity for the different types of transferrin. For instance it does not really have an affinity for the apotransferrin at all at the um, pH in this extracellular space that is about 7.4. Um, it's got slightly more affinity for the monotransferrin, let's just call that one, an affinity of 1 for instance, and a much higher affinity, 4 times higher, for the diferic transferrin, this is more or less. So we have to just draw this in, let's say 1, 2, and another 1, 2. So you can see that each transferrin molecule can bind 2 transferrin molecules and would ideally bind to diferic transferrin. Now, the transferrin receptors bound to transferrin um, are bound here in these little pits that can seal off at the top and form vesicles. And the vesicles can then fuse with endosomes. So if we go here, we can see it f this thing here fused with the endosome which is another um, little space inside the cell with a membrane. And now inside this endosome, something interesting happens. First important thing that happens is that um, hydrogen is pumped into the cell. Now hydrogen, when it is pumped in, will decrease the pH, make this more acid, and this is important, it will drop the pH to about 5. And when this happens, the iron molecules sitting on the transferrin receptor will be released. So let's just take them off the receptor, so we'll, we'll rem the receptors are now empty, and we will redraw them on the inside. So there you can see there's our, there are our iron molecules. Now these iron molecules are bound to transferrin in the so-called Fe3 plus form. And I'm just going to write it up here. Fe3 plus. The challenge is that the molecule that we have here in purple this is the molecule that is um, basically responsible for getting the iron out of the cell to the 
um, cytoplasm but it can only move iron out that is in the Fe2 uh, plus form so let's just write there I'm going to put it here Fe2 plus now to go from Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus you need an enzyme and this is what this molecule here is for this is called and let's maybe just change the color here this molecule is called STEAP3 it's got a long abbreviation which I'm not going to mention here not to confuse you and all this does it changes the iron from the 3 plus form 3 plus to the 2 plus so-called ferrous form this is ferric and that is ferrous and the 2 plus out, uh, form can now move out into the cytoplasm so this molecule here just for those who are interested um, is called divalent metal transferase 1 in some other cells there are different molecules that does the same thing um, but they still need the iron in the 2 plus form as it goes out into the cell now inside the cell this all these molecules that are now in the Fe2 plus form and let's put them in a different color so let's put the let's let's say these are the iron uh, that's now from all the different vesicles there can be many endosomes here will form what is called a labile iron pool okay or labile iron pool some people would also call this the transit iron pool because these iron molecules are in transit somewhere and that somewhere usually depends on what type of cell we are dealing with so for instance you will know that iron is very important in red blood cells so if this would be a red blood cell precursor the iron would be taken to mitochondria so let's just draw, draw a mitochondrium here okay so in this case the iron will move out to the mitochondria and be incorporated in him so I'm going to just add that here so in the mitochondria the iron will be incorporated into him which will be made into hemoglobin which can be used for oxygen carriage in the red blood cell so this is what usually happens in so-called erythroid cells or cells that produce red blood cells in other cells there is a slightly different movement of this labile iron to I'm just making a two-way arrow here to ferritin ferritin which is the storage molecule of iron and the ferritin of course can be degraded to hemosiderin so let's just try it hemosiderin here at the bottom hemosiderin so this usually happens in the non erythroid cells non erythroid cells so this will be the storage of iron whereas in the erythroid cells iron will be utilized to make heme the problem of course and we'll talk about this in another video is this labile um, iron pool can be very toxic to the cell and there are all sorts of theories of how the cell would protect itself against this labile iron but that is for another video at a later stage now just to show you how beautiful the system is you can see that at a pH of 5 here iron was released but the pH is not that low that the transferrin receptor and the transferrin molecules were destroyed they are still intact and the beauty of this is that the transferrin receptor molecule everything can be recycled and let's just draw an arrow here and you can see that this endosome can merge again with the plasma membrane and as we showed earlier the pH here in this area is slightly alkaline 7.4 and at this 
alkaline pH, um, the apotransferrin, because remember, the apotransferrin does not contain any iron. The iron has been removed inside the cell. So at this pH, the apotransferrin does not have affinity for the receptor and will now be released. So here we have our apotransferrin that can now move back into the bloodstream and go around to go and pick up new iron to bring back to the transferrin receptors here.